Okay, so I have 10 o'clock. Are you ready, Julie? I am if you are, Kelly. All right, I'm all about starting on time. So good morning or good afternoon or good evening, depending on where you are. Uh, my name is Kelly Bryant. I am uh, the co-chair of Simulation Week, and I also happen to be a member of the Simulation Communications and Media Committee. Uh, my main role here is at Columbia University Assistant Dean of Clinical Affairs and Simulation. I have the pleasure of starting us off today. Today is the first day of Healthcare Simulation Week, and we have no other than our own SSH president uh, for our first webinar to start off Sim Week. So I'd like to introduce Dr. Julie Maxworthy, who is an associate professor at University of San Francisco, and as I said, the current president of Society for Simulation and Healthcare. Her areas of teaching expertise include leadership, quality, patient safety, project management, and healthcare simulation. She is the recent past chair of the Healthcare Leadership and Innovations Department. And over the past decade, Dr. Maxworthy has become very involved in the world of healthcare simulation, and in particular, SSH. Um, in addition to being the current president, she's also been um, president-elect, board of directors, at-large director, secretary, chair of accreditation committee, and the list goes on. So without further ado, I would like to introduce Dr. Julie Maxworthy for her presentation on reuniting with a purpose. Well, thank you. Thank you, Kelly. I am so excited to have the opportunity to, to um, launch Sim Week. Wow, how did it get to be September already? Um, this year, um, for better or worse, it just seems like it's going by quite quickly. Um, so I, first of all, I wanna thank the Media Communications Committee for all their efforts. Every year it all comes together along with the staff to make Sim Week um, a success throughout our community of practice. So my topic today is just a little bit about reuniting. So in reuniting with a purpose, it's been a long time since we've seen each other in person. Uh, many of us, um, speaking for myself and a lot of colleagues, we're kind of weary of the current state of the world, um, no matter where we are on it. And that's really, um, for, you know, the, the pandemic has really um, provided us um, a global concern that has impacted across the globe in so many different ways. And, you know, last year when we um, had Sim Week, it seemed, you know, we had our arm, starting to get our arms around this. There was a vaccine on the horizon. And um, a lots have happened um, since that time a year ago. Um, but I, seeing the glimmer globally. It's not as bright as I'd like it at this point, but it is there. And my hope is that um, this ends soon. We come up with plans globally to ensure that um, our, our, those of us in this field and those of us um, with family and everybody gets, um, it, we get through this, but we'll get through it together. And hasn't simulation, healthcare simulation, just bloomed and blossomed in this environment? Fortunately, unfortunately, uh, because it has truly been seen as a methodology, health simulation has been seen as a methodology to improve our patient outcomes. We've been able to use it to pivot, to continue to matriculate our students through our programs. It has just um, made a huge difference. And, you know, in all of this, we hope and look forward to the day when we will reunite again and at a, a simulation conference. We had our, you know, the SimOps meeting in Florida and that was a huge success. That was the first time we had had the opportunity to um, meet and everybody that went was so thrilled with the opportunity to see people in person. Mind you, it was behind masks, but um, it really was, monumental for all of us to be able to get together again after so many months of, um, uh, for lack of a better term, living in our little cocoons for safety's sake. But why reunions matter to us? Um, it gives us a chance to reconnect in a way that's unique. Um, that power of synergy when we see each other face-to-face -face occurs and it provides us a mechanism by which we as a community of practice can build on you know, I, I don't know about you, but I've gotten to many talks where the audience, because we all have an interest in a particular topic, there are so much activity and synergy that occurs 
you know, before, during, and after these talks that builds on connections globally and opportunities for research. Um, all kinds of scholarship can occur by virtue of the fact that we see each other, not just through a screen, <laughs> but in, in person, sitting next to somebody and just starting that one-off conversation about something that you, you think maybe nobody else on this planet might have an interest in. Lo and behold, that person who's also at that, meet, at that particular talk has that same perception of there's nobody else here that's going to be interested in this particular topic and here you go and it, what I love also about healthcare sim doesn't matter your discipline if you have a goal um, in improving patient safety we all meet um, and work together so very well for the for the benefit of our patients and, it, and for me I love going for the networking um, to get together and see friends far across the globe. And then I invariably meet a few new ones. No matter what my role has been in simulation, I have always come away from meetings um, just so energized and so uh, thrilled that I've had the opportunity to meet and connect with others of like minds. I know that our IMSH last year, we had to pivot. Um, it was, you know, it went on for quite a while, three months. Some people have given us feedback that might've been a little bit too long. Others said couldn't get enough of it. And then having it available for our members after the event was a huge plus. Um, and the hope had been that at least we could meet in some of the live sessions and have some connections. And I have heard that many did make connections that way, but it's again, meeting, you know, getting face-to-face -face with folks truly is very powerful. So I wanted to uh, remind everybody that our first healthcare simulation week going back to healthcare sim, where um, we have the opportunity globally to celebrate the amazing community practice that we have, that the inaugural healthcare simulation week was back in uh, the 11th through the 15th of September, 2017. And people think, oh, this has always been here, but nope, this is actually our fifth annual week. Um, it has had uh, sort of some iterations over the years, but the things that we have seen that have been big hits in particular have been the video contests. And just to let you know, Wednesday night, Wednesday evening, um, the and there will be an announcement of the video winners. Um, and so that's always fun. I've watched all the videos. I uh, saw that, you know, there's such a range of, of submissions. And that's what I love, the energy and um, the activities uh, related to people feeling connected to the society in such a way that they felt um, compelled to and felt engaged enough to submit videos. So if you didn't do it last year and you've not done it in the past, please think about doing it in the future because it's a great way to share the great work that people have done. There's a huge a slant more towards the COVID um, preparation and that's, a, that's totally appropriate in the world that we're living in currently. Um, and really the goal of Healthcare Simulation Week is to increase the awareness of what we do. Um, for our communities and how we're utilizing simulation to safer, more knowledgeable patient care. It, every, you know, um, I go to lots of different kinds of meetings and um, the passion about this area is um, huge. And so you have done a great thing by joining this community practice. I mean, we had over 500 pins, a new record of organization, individuals placing their pin of where they are located on the globe. Um, and the great work that they've done, like I said, through the simulation um, submissions for the videos and also the great number of simulation submissions we've had um, related to <clears throat> um, IMSH, which I'll get to in just a minute. But none of this could happen without the amazing SSH staff. And oftentimes they're just a name on an email, but I wanted to place up here all their faces um, and so that you can see these great individuals who have made a huge difference um, and support us. We are unique. I am, uh, SSH is unique in the fact that we have employees. Most of the other program, you know, other society or groups within uh, our community practice are a You know, they have volunteers to do it, and they use a management company. We went a different route when we were formed you know, many years ago to have employees. So as a board, just to let you know, we are always cognizant of the fact that we have employees, but what I've seen on that, to that end is that we have people that are passionate, go above and beyond every single day to support us as the volunteers in being successful and providing amazing opportunities for our members 
to be engaged as much as they wish to be in our organization. So my hat's off to them. They are a wonderful group. I've worked with every single one in some way, shape or form for my many years of being in the society. And um, it, I feel like there are many, many are our family because we see each other at conferences. We connect um, all the time over different initiatives that are going on within the society. And they are just, we are incredibly lucky to have such a strong, strong team. But I couldn't, like I said earlier, I can't not talk about IMSH. It's coming. January, it's going to be here before we know it. It's the 15th through the 19th in Los Angeles. And our theme, which is sort of ties into what I'm talking about now, about reuniting, connecting, and advancing our field. So I'm very excited about this um, opportunity for us to get together. Um, more information will be coming out. Of course, we are keeping our eyes on our screens, figuring out what the expectations are for keeping our members safe during the event. And as things have been for way too long, it's a fluid situation, but we will be keeping you all in the loop to ensure that um, we keep our members safe. Um, I'm here in California and, you know, it's, we have pockets of, of um, areas of excellence, but we have other areas that are not as um, vaccinated. The hope has been that with new ruling that's coming uh, down the path, that we will ensure that um, we get our arms around the current state that we're in and that we can continue to meet, um, at least with masks on at this stage in time. But again, we as an organization, SSH will keep you in the loop. We are going to take the most uh, conservative route because we wanna ensure that our members are safe. So I'm very excited about the opportunity because we can reunite with a purpose. It'll, IMSH will be here before we know it. Registration will be starting soon, so keep an eye out for it. I am so excited about reuniting with folks. And when we get together, I believe that we are going, I, when I do go to events now, because I'm fully vaccinated and I still wear masks, uh, just because I have a little grandson that um, I worry about because he can't get vaccinated yet, that people do the right thing and, and um, you know, do what they need to do so they can attend. And, and I look forward to uh, reuniting with folks. Um, and also I wanna let you know that every day this week at 10 a.m. Eastern, there will be a different speaker. Haru is gonna be speaking tomorrow. We are we are we have lots of activities for you. And like I said, on Wednesday, you'll have the opportunity to hear the winner of the video contest. Um, <clears throat> my contact information is here. I thank you all for your time and attention. And I think if we have a few minutes, uh, we could move um, to questions if anybody has any and wants to put it in the chat, Kelly, if that would be okay. Yes, I did put in the chat if people had questions and we do have a question. Excellent. Should I stop sharing at this point? Sure. I think that would be good. Look at everyone. So excited to see you all. So what was the question, Kelly? So the question is, what's going to be new for IMSH 2022? Well, like I said, it's a fluid situation. So, you know, we have, um, a, we're doing a huge push related to research. Research has grown and the committee itself has grown and the activities related to opportunities for people to become more engaged in research. Because for a lot of people, they have concerns. That, that, you know, depending on where they are in their organization, maybe they don't feel like they have the tools. So we wanna make sure that people do, especially early researchers, we wanna give them those opportunities. So there will be those opportunities to connect, whether we are in-person, virtual or hybrid, um, we will make it um, happen. Those are, what, that's one of it. Um, the other piece, you know, we have our vendors as we meet in person. I know people are very excited about the opportunity to see them again. Um, it has been made very clear in lots of organizations that have, have had virtual events and had vendor opportunities. They've not been well attended um, and for lots of different reasons. So the hope is with us meeting in person that the vendors will be there, um, our partners and um, and be there to help people, you know, bet, better understand because a lot of technology is advanced in this 18 months that we have been hibernating 
for safety's sake. So I'm very excited about that aspect um, of being able to share that with our members. Thank you. Yeah, that's always one of my highlights going to the vendor showcase and seeing all the new fun simulation equipment and task trainers yes. that are out there. Um, yes. This is a little bit of a broader question, and it is what's new at SSH now outside of the conference? <laughs> Great question. You know, I, it is as a board, we're meeting actually, the plan is to meet in person um, next in November, um, barring any major changes. You know, we have our rules now that, you know, it, when we meet, we are meeting and we are wearing masks inside um, because that's the CDC guidelines at this time. Um, we are going to be doing some strategic planning in our meeting in November. We had kind of, as Bob uh, Armstrong likes to call it, we had a dumpster fire um, with COVID. And I would have to say it's continued. Um, it is still burning quite bright. Um, and so things, you know, pivoted as far as the board, you know, we really needed to take care of our members and our pillars that we have developed and the strategies that we had seemed to carry over. So the, the intention is that we are um, going to be doing a lot of strategic planning in light of several variables, one of them being COVID and the ramifications of that over the long term. The other piece is, you know, just to let folks know, we as a organization, and I bring up the fact I brought up earlier that we have met our staff, our employees. Because of that, we were, as an organization, able to apply for PPE loans because um, we were not unable to um, have our usual events. And so our revenue all was you know, not as it had been. So we were able to, because we have employees, unlike a management company, we were able to apply for PPE loans. So, so financially, we are in a pretty good place. And, and at the last at IMSH 2020, um, because um, the we had some amazing, because of Jen Manos particularly, and our, our legal team, we were able to get what they call a force majeure. So we were able to get our funds back from that. So the hope is that we can increase the um, opportunities for funding and also maintain our stability as an organization. We also have, uh, for those, many of you, I see the faces are familiar here, um, you know, with Chad Epps passing, we, um, which every time I say his name, it makes me sad. I mean, he was a, just one of the nicest people I've ever had the pleasure of knowing. And so we are, and people um, reached out financially to, so, you know, because they, we said we we're going to start, a, you know, a fund in his behalf. So we are very excited about um, what's going to be happening at IMSH, and I'm not going to let the cat out of the bag, which is an odd term, but um, I'm, we're not letting, <laughs> but we're doing things in related to um, highlighting his career and his um, passion for our field. And as his family has said, he had three passions, his family, um, sim God and simulation. So um, we are, we were very fortunate to have somebody of his caliber amongst us. And we want to highlight his, his, his contributions to us as an entity. And also all of simulation, not just SSH. He was um, an important part of um, many organizations. All you had to do was ask. Um, and uh, I said, we were very fortunate. So those are just a couple items from an SSH perspective that I think our members need to know about that financially we're stable. We're looking forward to having our event and um, we have some great things planned as always for IMSH. Thank you for that update. Yes. Um, an additional question about accreditation. Are there accredited well, visits still virtual right now? They are. Great question. I'm actually involved in one currently. I wish I could go because it's a pretty good destination. Um, however, <laughs> um, for the safety of our members um, and what have you, yes, we are still doing our visits virtually. We, as a, I know the council and committee is looking at what our options are moving us forward because it seems to be a a savings for our sites. Um, but as I have always, I've been in accreditation for over a decade. And we like to say, once you've seen one Sim Center, you've seen one Sim Center and doing it virtually, you really don't get the same. You do a walk around, but it's not the same as sitting in a room. And I go back to that, you know, um, can, reuniting with a purpose. Those types of visits are um, incredibly helpful for not only those of us that review, but also for those who are, um, at the site, you know, because we have 
the majority of our reviewers now have come from a sim an accredited center. So they've had their own lived experience and then they bring they impart their knowledge and ex you know experiences to the sites when they're on ground, which is, you can do that virtually, but it's not as, I don't think it's as, as um, it's a, not as good for lack of a better term. I guess I need another cup of coffee. Um, not as, as, as uh, good as when we're actually in person, but we are for the safety of everybody. And the benefit to the site is we don't have the expense of the travel, which we totally are aware of, can be very hefty, especially for our international sites. So um, we're, we are very cognizant of that fact. And we want to make sure that, and what we're seeing is we've, we've developed, a, there's a new database for sites to upload their data, which is called WiseHive. And the hope is that we can garner much better data about sites so that we can share that amongst all our accredited sites so they can have a better idea of where they sit as far as staffing, um, volume, those types of issues that we're asked a lot about from an accreditation perspective. Mm -hmm. Great. All right, it seemed like that was the last question in the chat box. I do wanna give everybody opportunity. If you have any other questions, if you wanna unmute yourself and ask your question live, that's fine. This is your opportunity before we end. <laughs> <laughs> and also I put up my contact information. I'm always looking for content for my monthly message from uh, that I like to send out. Um, I also am interested in hearing from our members, you know, ideas for, you know, our events that I could pass along to Jen, who then in turn turns it over to, um, you know, other committees as, as warranted. But yes, it's a very exciting time. I will say for the accreditation, we had our most submissions ever this round. And the other piece I will add from accreditation perspective is that we are, the standards have been revised um, and approved upon. Um, and we've also added the found a fellows piece. So if you have a fellowship program, you might want to look at those standards. Even if you don't go for accreditation, the standards are there for a reason, for free on our website, because we want to um, impart best practices across the, the community practice. And the best way to do that is to share. And we, so that's why, and if you don't, if you don't have the funds, you're, you know, one person show, use the standards as a mechanism by which to show that you have a quality program, because that is something that we're seeing in light of COVID is that, um, you know, if we're going to be providing additional hours for um, our learners in a simulated environment, we have to, we have to be able to prove that we have a quality program. And one of the best ways to do that is to uh, be an accredited program. We're seeing that when people are asking, and it also is a great motivator from a marketing perspective. If you have an accredited program, you should be highlighting that everywhere you can to be able to drive business in the form of students everywhere you can. And that really is a driver from what I've heard from my conversations with learners over the years when I visit simulation centers and talk to them virtually is, you know, it was the fact that this is an accredited program. When I go for reaccredits, it really is a big driver of why people go to a particular program. Mm -hmm. So I think I saw a couple things that might have come up. Well, uh, our president-elect, Haru, is actually with us today. I just want to give a, a plug there. He will be presenting tomorrow at 10 a.m. on future opportunities in healthcare simulation. And he had a great question in the chat that I'd love to hear from some members uh, that are participating today. What is everybody doing for healthcare sim week? Does anybody? Yes, know? that's a great one. Thank you, Haru. I'll start off. I'm having Go ahead. A, Thank you, Kelly. I'm having an escape room. I can't wait. <laughs> oh, so tell me more. What is what's happening in your escape so room? So we we're gonna have four teams uh, of students from different levels. We have uh, both DMP students and RN students. And I don't know if I play escape room like you know the, the usual escape room, but we give them clues and they're gonna have to go into the room and and figure out that clue. And once they solve, we give an envelope to go to the next room to solve that clue. So we have about six stations. And then whoever's first hits the buzzer, they're the winner. We're giving them a whole bunch of uh, healthcare sim week um, swag as the prize, and we're having a, a, a pizza party. So that's one Ooh. of the events that we're doing. We're also doing a demonstration of our task trainers and our uh, VR uh, demonstration. So I'm kind of excited about this week. Excellent, excellent. Haru, I know you've probably got things going on in the um, South. Well, it makes me want to go up to New York and check I out. I know, the me too. Come on. You know, that's, that's the unfortunate thing. Like, I wish, every, like, 
wouldn't it be incredible if everybody could be immersed in each other's healthcare sim week activities this week? Like that would be like uh, the Disney for healthcare simulation. <laughs> so, um, you know, we're doing um, moulage costume competitions. We have a trivia uh um trivia day we have um we're doing uh obstetrical simulation that um all of our even non-clinical staff can get involved in with sort of basic um just human interaction stuff so just trying to get folks in our um uh, simulation center more engaged because we have a lot of administrative folks that aren't in the day-to-day -day and and you know we it's it's all about the the vision or the the north star for our organization and we want everybody to feel like they're a part of it and sometimes if you're in an office working on spreadsheets and things all day you sometimes lose um sort of the 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 bigger picture and so we're trying to engage all of our staff so that they understand uh the bigger picture and 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 you know the mission and the vision that we're really aspiring for in simulation Excellent. So tell me a little bit, what might be a question on the trivia quiz? They're all sort of camels related trivia. So like, you know, what was here on this facility before it all started? So it's just oh. getting to know um, our, our setter. Oh, that's great. That's great. So you're, are you kind of having like an open house of sorts, sounds like. Yeah, sort of. I mean, some of it's going to be virtual. We, we've converted, um, you know, camels is a huge facility. We have over 40 staff and we've converted about half of our staff to be virtual full time now. So we've, oh. you know, from COVID we've, we, we've sort of lost the, the, the camaraderie that we have, we had pre COVID. Mm -hmm. um, and so um, we're doing a lot of things that are mixed virtual uh, hybrid uh, this week and, you know, taking lessons learned in the last 17, 18, 18 months mm -hmm. uh, training in a global pandemic. We're just applying it during healthcare sim week. Excellent. What a great way to kind of, you know, utilize your resources in such a unique way. Now I see Barbara sitting there, put something on there. So I'm going to ask her to unmute and tell us what she's up to because she's a friendly face. <laughs> oh, thank you. It's so good to see everyone. It is. And so our marketing group decided that they wanted to do some oh, publicity or some education on what we do with our SIM certificate program. So I'm proud to say that this was started way before me. It was in 2010 by Dr. Kim Layton. And then I began this role in 2012. So there's three totally online simulation courses that we, we teach. And we're really excited that we get such great support from our administration for that, that we're able to continue that, even though sometimes the numbers are down. And this is one that we can offer globally. So not only in Lincoln, Nebraska, but we've had participants <laughs> from Saudi Arabia recently. So that was kind of cool to learn from different disciplines. And I learn as much as they mm -hmm. learn, hopefully, in our SIM program. And then also there was a video that was made for um, social media of our simulation center that we're really proud of because this was an area that was renovated and it used to be the college dorm that I lived in ages ago. Oh, how funny. Yeah. <laughs> and now it's got, you know, like eight simulation rooms and we have nine mannequins and we have beeline and all that kind of stuff. So it was fun to showcase that. So thank you for allowing me to share what's going on in Lincoln, Nebraska. Well, you also submitted a, I saw your video. You were oh, one of the yes. submissions to the video contest. So I applaud yeah. your group for making that, <laughs> submitting that. Cause that's, you know, it's fun. It was fun and I'm competitive. And so that's why I do things like this. And I hope I didn't hope I didn't embarrass my college by presenting um, a little video clip because we did it on spur of the moment. That's kind of me. It's like mm -hmm. a fast track. It's like, oh, I saw this. Yes. I well. might as well, you know, get in the bucket and give it a try. So um, the Sim Center um, Lab Tech, I said, Grace, let's go for it. And so we got on to our beeline and off we went. And I was surprised because it was less than a minute. So I had to function. It feels like that. a lifetime though, doesn't it? It does, but I did it in two <laughs> takes. So that's why other, these other ones were so professionally done. And then Curtis, it's like, I think I need to backtrack on this because I don't want to embarrass my college and myself. But I thought, <laughs> okay, I can, I can do it because some of those were so great or a majority of them were way over the top they mean they were excellent and so right. i wanted to share what we do here too i, appreciate now, I just want to put in a plug 
Yeah. 630. Make sure you tune in to see who the winner is of the video. Yes. Yeah. Well, and I'm really yeah. proud of our team because we have a great team that does rural outreach. That's what I really want to plug that we do rural outreach to Nebraska for um, rural hospitals that don't have the opportunity to do simulation. So that is a right. big thing in our hearts and we do it all for free. The doctors give of their time, the educators give of your time. We give of our time in the Sim Center so that we can load up the bus, go out to the rural <laughs> hospitals, do some training there with simulation. Yeah. And um, it's a success and we have a, you know, waiting lines, but we only can do so much. That's the hard part. I know, I know, but I appreciate the fact that you just pulled out the beeline and off you went. And yep. I mean, that's how it should be. I mean, and that's why kind of when I saw you were on, I was like, oh, I, I'm going to bring her up because it's, that's, that's all it takes. You know, we need to share what we're doing and some week is the, is the week to do it. And yeah. well, all year round. I mean, that's why we have Sim Connect. I mean, there's so many different vehicles within the society for you to be able to um, highlight the work that you're doing and get additional you know, input from others. I mean, we are a community oh, yeah. practice and um, we thrive by hel helping each other and, and doing, you know, seeing these great activities. I mean, I applaud your group for taking the time and prioritizing your community, you know, to improve outcomes for the rural setting because it's critical for us mm -hmm. to be successful. And we're, who better to do that than simulationists? I'm just saying. That's right. Because, you know, we they, and they want it, the doctors, the nurses, the respiratory therapists that are out there. And so they set time aside. And our doctors, they're really busy, neonatologists and the MFM physician. Mm -hmm. But they, they carve this out and they wouldn't go away from our team ever. So this is like our fourth year. We have a fifth year coming up and it's obstetrical emergencies. So love it. Thanks for the opportunity. Thank you oh, for sure. sharing, Barbara. Of course, of course. Of course. We do so, have someone else that wanted to share their sim week plans. Of course, go for it. AJ, where are you, AJ? You want to come on and let us know your plans for healthcare sim week. Hello. Um, Hello. We're at the Medical College of Georgia in Augusta, Georgia. Um, and so we have a program here um, that has simulation, obviously, but we're also in charge of the SP program for all of the health professions on our health sciences campus. Um, so we're doing a few events just for the core educational simulation team. Um, thank you notes and swag from your website. Uh, we're doing uh, breakfast tomorrow morning, cake on Wednesday, but then we're also hosting our first SP awards um, yeah. where it's similar to the Academy Awards. People could submit their own videos. We have uh, okay. categories for drama, uh, comedic performance, musical. And so like we have an SP who's a puppeteer. That video was very cool. Ooh, wow. um, and so it's, a lot of them have some theater backgrounds. So we have over 80 SPs at this point. So wow. it kind of gave the ones who are more interested in highlighting their skills in that area, the opportunity to shine a little bit. So the, we're having fun mostly. <laughs> I'm so pleased to hear that because I mean, simulation, I mean, this past almost two years has been hard. I mean, let's admit it, it's been hard and anything we can find to bring a little levity is a plus, you know, and, it, it, and if you could do it with your coworkers and again, like Haru was mentioning, you know, he's got half his staff is now virtual um, and it's hard to make those connections, but these kinds of, like you said, having a, a place to, to, you know, a focus on like sim week and we're going to have this academy, where, it, fabulous. I love it. Thank you, AJ, for sharing. That's a great I'm just thrilled to hear that. Just and so we'd like, we'd love to see um, if you have, um, a, if you tape it, we can maybe post it maybe on Sim Connect. It would be great mm -hmm. to see how you know because that's where we learn from each other so well is by watching and connecting. Like I said, we're reuniting, and I'm not going to sing because. I don't have a very good voice. So anyway, but Kelly. <laughs> I was going to tell you to go for it. Uh, <laughs> yeah, do it. It'll go viral. Do it. Come on. <laughs> we'll definitely post that on social media. Oh. <laughs> but anyway, just a reminder too, Haru's been doing a great job. Please, if you're doing anything for Sim Week, hashtag uh, HC Sim Week. And you can add a 21 at the end. That's fine. Either HSC Sim Week or HC Sim Week 21. It's right here. All right. Yeah. Yeah. I've got my little back up here. Oh, there you are. <laughs> Perfect. Except to move yes. my head. It's right Here's there. The and you have a QRR code, Haru. I appreciate that. That's uh, I forgot which one, if that's for camels or if that's for the sim week, but it's for something. <laughs> <laughs> All right. All right. I just, can Every I just put a quick uh, plug out? Um, 
we specifically launched, uh, so we have a healthcare super teams podcast. Um, the first seven episodes or so was focused around uh, interviewing folks in team science or teamwork. Um, and then we shifted the season is on um, looking at diversity in healthcare at reducing uh, racism and bias. And we've interviewed multiple different um, experts from different um, both uh, diverse backgrounds and professions. But, you know, and, and it's not just simulation, this is all healthcare. But this week, because we interviewed Jen Arnold, and so she represents diversity within uh, people with disability, um, short stature. And so um, we timed it just to launch it today during Healthcare Sim Week because Jen Ar no Arnold is known everywhere. So if you get a chance, please listen to her, uh, our, um, our interview with her. Uh, I put the link in the chat box. Thank you, Haru. That's great. And anything else, like I said, you can share it. If you want to join other times this week and you have something else you'd like to share, feel free. Um, and um, again, we can distribute a lot of this through uh, the society. And again, Sim Connect is our community. Those, those are the kind of venues we can utilize to, to disseminate a lot of this great work. I know it takes a couple extra minutes, but it really can help another uh, program um, really improve itself. So I appreciate that. Thank you, Haru. All right. So if there's no further questions, I think that ends our first webinar for Healthcare Sim Week. I want to thank Julie and oh, of course. You also for your wonderful presentation and giving us those very useful updates on SSH. And so again, tomorrow we have a presentation on future opportunities in healthcare simulation by no other than our president-elect, Haru Akuda. So please uh, tune in tomorrow again, 10 o'clock Eastern. You can register on the SSH uh, website. And we have webinars every day this week at 10 o'clock, including Lori Liochi, who's here with us today on simulation terminology. Desiree and myself are doing a, a talk on simulation and DEI, uh, just a casual conversation. On Thursday, we have Penny Watts, who will be presenting on using healthcare simulations and the newest standards of practice. On Friday, we have Shalita Kimball, who I also see in the audience today, who are presenting, and we'll be ending it with David Grant, who's gonna be talking about reunite to reimagine re a better future. So a, a ton of great webinars for the entire healthcare simulation uh, week. So we're hoping to see you uh, hopefully every day this week. <laughs> but Fabulous. if you replay all of them on Sunday in case you miss any of them. <laughs> all right. So thank you everybody for joining us and happy healthcare simulation week. Hey, take care. Bye everyone. Bye.